Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I know a lot of you guys are wanting to know right now with the current state of the market, with players that you pack or players that are in your team, should you hold or should you sell those cards? And today, I wanna enter that conversation yet again. I know there's a lot of questions. I'm gonna try to tackle it today to the best of my abilities because this market is so different. The entirety of this market is so different from what we were expecting with the preview packs, with the pack weight being so high. Again, I didn't even mention it in yesterday's video, but it's like 7.6% right now pack weight on an 84 plus card out of a 7.5K pack, which is incredible, incredible pack weight compared to what it is, which is just really, really, really increasing the supply on this game. So I wanna talk about some holder sell scenarios and also big news just from a couple hours ago, price range updates have been released to all of the extinct players uh, that were extinct. It was just a handful of them. Of course, you guys know who they were. Renato Sanchez, uh, Martial, Lacroix, Klosterman, Koundé, and Upa Meccano. Now, some of those players are already starting to go back extinct again. Renato Sanchez was upgraded from a 15,000 coins price range up to 27,500 coins. He is going extinct again, which I think is good reason because this card looks insane. And this, honestly, this card's probably going to be around 30, high 30s, mid 30s to 40,000 coins, in my opinion, after another price range update because people have not been able to get their hands on this card. And of course, it's Renato Sanchez and how overpowered is he? in the last FIFA, everybody knows that Renato was insane and they want to use him. So that Renato card is basically going to go extinct again, but all of the others, and again, this is what I'm going to base, again, a lot of my, my points around is that this market and the supply is just incredibly insane. Martial was extinct at 16,000 coins. He got a price range update to, what is it, like 27,500 coins, and he's back down to 16K. Right now, what you're seeing is a lot of people who bought these cards when they were extinct, who were sniping them and stuff like that, they're basically listing these cards back up on the market, trying to get whatever little bit of profit they can, um, and it's driving the price downwards, right? It's driving the price downwards with a lot of this supply. Now, how do I know that it's people doing that? Well, you can tell by the number of listings, number of owners that a card has had. A lot of these, these cards here that are being listed up are second owner, and that tells me that somebody sniped this card off the market and now they're listing it up. Now, some of them are first owner, which probably means they're either recently packed or, or somebody packed them and held on to them for the price range update. But a lot of these cards that are second owner really just tells you that somebody bought the card and now they're listing it up and trying to get profit and trying to get their coins back, which this right now is kind of looking like a, a failed investment, right? With the price range update and the cards not going as high as they want to. So, um, you know, it's, it's a very tricky situation messing with price ranges and, um, Again, with the supply, the amount of supply that we have seen on the market so far with preview packs and with the insane pack weight, it's just, again, made things really, really, really interesting. Now, I do think that some of these cards could bounce back, and this Upa Makana was one to me that I think is the most intriguing out of all of these cards that have has price range updates today because if you think about it, there are three more Bundesliga center backs that look really, really meta. Uh, that are now back on the market that were extinct before. Upa Meccano, Klosterman, and Lacroix. So that means a couple things. Number one, there's three brand new meta center backs that are you know attainable to everybody on the game now that were not available before. That's going to drop some center back prices. And uh, also, it's it's going to maybe make some people you know buy some other Bundesliga links to these cards if they wanted to try out these cards that they and they weren't able to do so before. So I do think that Uba Meccano and Kunde and Renato Sanchez are my couple favorites from this set, uh, from the price range updates. But again, just with all the supply that we're seeing on this game, prices aren't really moving, right? Prices, the prices that are moving the most are on SBC fodder cards. People are going and paying big dollars, big coins, for players that they are using to go and do the advanced SBCs because packs are so in Sane. Now, actually, what you're seeing tonight is since these price ranges updated, I'm going to refresh this page. You're seeing some prices drop. Erling Holland was 120,000 coins, 115K. He's now under 100,000 coins. Um, Gomez was 52,000 coins right when these price ranges dropped. He's now 46. I have a screen ER that I quickly sold when I saw the price ranges update because screen ER was up in price at about 25K. Mine had a shadow on it, so I sold it for 27. And I got out because I'm worried for center backs 
on this game. Take a look at St. Juste. Um, this was a card that was very hyped up. But of course, with the three new Bundesliga center backs that have come on the market, this guy has gone from 26,000 coins to 19K in just about one or two hours because of the brand new center backs that are on the market, right? It's a substitute item that was kind of put on the market because it's no longer extinct that is now here. Foden was like 23K, he's now 21. So uh, it's really impacting the market a lot right now these price range updates is impacting the market a lot because people are selling some stuff to go out and try these cards and as well as we're getting closer and closer to this monday date when a lot of people are worried about the market crashing and with prices not going up very much again because of the supply that's maybe turning my opinion to more of like maybe maybe you're gonna sell some of these cards a lot of these lower tier cards I'm honestly looking at potential sells now instead of more of a holding process. Now, of course, some cards still do seem very cheap, and we have to keep in mind that a lot of people on this game right now are only on the web app. So how does that affect things? Well, it affects things in the fact that they can't play games. They're only on the web app trying to trade, trying to make coins and, and do packs and do investments, right? And that's going to impact the market a little bit because you're going to have some more people trading and there's less gameplay demand, right? There's less gameplay demand because those people on the web app that don't have EA Play 10-hour trial or they've used up their 10 hours, they don't have any any gameplay demand left, if you will. It's only menu. They can only interact with the menus. They can't do any games or gameplay. So that, to me, means that there is obviously more demand for some of these high-tier cards still yet to come, which is why I'm still saying guys like Timo Werner, guys like even Joe Gomez or you know Bruno Fernandes, especially the upper-tier, upper-echelon cards like Bruno Fernandes, Erling Holland, Hyunmin Son, uh, Varane, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Messi, Aubameyang, you know, those types of De Bruyne, those types of cards, I'm still holding those. I really am holding those. Now, they could go down a little bit. Like, I think Bruno Fernandes is like 160 or something thousand coins, 140,000 coins. I think these cards could go down a little bit in the next couple of days. But ultimately, after that, I do think they're just going to continue to rise because people are getting more and more coins. They're going out, building these better teams, upgrading their teams. And as they get on the game, there's just more gameplay demand. So I do think that lower tier cards, again, are going to continue to drop off big time. And my biggest advice to you is with all this supply that's on the market, your best bet is to stay as liquid as possible. And I know a lot of you guys like to try out these brand new cards. You like to try out these guys that are hyped. And, you know, it costs coins to buy players. And you're putting yourself, I guess, a little bit at risk when you're buying a player at any time because its value could change. And if you don't mind losing a few coins because you want to try out a card, I rate that, right? I think that's great because ultimately do what makes you have the most fun. But with a lot of these cards... I really just think with the volatility that this market has, there's never been a better year to run a full and tradable squad. I know it's kind of hard right now, but if you just run run with a really cheap starter squad for the first couple of weeks, and then as we have SBCs and have uh, objective players that are released, you can start to form a team together around those untradable cards or you know cards that you pack from untradable rewards. That's really what I would start to base your team around. Again, I, I run up my ultimate team like this almost every single year. I'm obviously not a competitive player, but um, I don't look to have the most meta overpowered and, and you know usable players in my team all the time because I know that those cards move around a lot on the market. And when another one comes on the market, a lot of the other ones drop, right? Again, look at St. Juste, LaCroix, Klosterman, and Ub Meccano came on the market and St. Juste absolutely dies, right? He's down 7,000 coins in an hour and the rest of the market is even dipping a bit because of these cards that have come onto the game. So that's just my, again, little, I guess, plea or uh, not plea, but my recommendation for use as many untradeable players as you can because that protects you from losing some coins. Now, again, do whatever makes you have the most fun. But when you're thinking about that conversation of should I sell or should I hold? Again, think about are you okay maybe losing a little bit of coins on this card if it brings you some gameplay enjoyment. Even though we expect some of these cards to still go up, I don't think you're going to see the massive price boosts and price increases that a lot of people are expecting to see um, on some of these lower rated cards just because of the amount of supply that is on this game. So higher tier cards, again, Sterling. A lot of people are asking me about Sterling. I think Sterling is still one of the best Prem left mids in the game or the best. I know there's Rashford and Sun that are out there. I hear Sun is really, really good. But Sterling for 62,000 coins with 90 plus pace. I know he's only got a three-star weak foot. 
but this is a really, really good card, and I think it's going to be one that is maintainingly popular. So you can see he was 57K. He was up to 67K just a bit ago, and now he's dropped down to 62. Again, what I'm honestly thinking we're going to continue to see is fluctuations like this. Stuff gets low in the middle of the day. It rises up into the evening and then probably drops back down into the morning for the next day. I think that's what we're going to continue to see over the next couple of days. And as we, as we get into Saturday and Sunday and especially Monday when all those pre-order bonuses are going to be coming out, I think a lot of stuff is going to get panic sold. I, I really think that a lot of stuff is going to get sold off because if these prices don't start to boom, which I really don't see any reason why they would start to take off, then you're going to have people that will start getting scared and they're going to start listing their cards up and that's going to drive some of the stuff even lower in price. So I know that does sound scary for a lot of you guys. If you don't want to risk it, I think you can, you can take your coins on basically every single card in this game except some of the top tier cards. If you've packed a Ronaldo, if you've packed a Messi, of course, both of these cards are going to be involved in the ones to watch promo. It's guaranteed already. And they're just so rare and so in demand that these cards, if they're going to be dropping, it's going to be short lived and they're going to rebound back after that. I would really not sell any of those because those I think will go higher. Um, but, you know, some of your mid tier echelon, you know, mid echelon players, even cards like a, like a Kessie, right? You know, he's 84 rated, which is higher rated than some of this other stuff, especially stuff that is lower than 84. Like I'm talking the 82s and below. It just seems like there's so much supply that it, it and the prices haven't really started to, to, to rebound or to boom at all yet. Um, it's, I really think that a lot of that stuff is going to continue to drop. It's not going to be a crazy drop off until we get maybe towards Sunday or Monday. Then after Monday, it's a different story. A lot of stuff is probably going to get panic sold and it's going to go crazy high after that. But until we get there, it's just a lot of uncertainty and it's a lot of, okay, this is a lot of supply. Is there enough demand to meet this supply to make these cards go up in price? And I honestly don't think that there is all the way across this entire game right now at the moment. So I'm leaning towards sell on a decent amount of cards, but definitely there's a few of the upper echelon, the most meta cards in this game that I would still hold on to. Or think about it this way too. Let's let's say you have Timo Werner. We'll use him as our example again. Let's say you have Timo Werner in your team. Let's say right now he's he's 47,000 coins. He's dropped a little bit in price. Let's say he goes to 40,000. Let's say he drops to 40,000 coins over the next couple of days with some supply, with some FIFA points. But then into next week, he goes back to 60K, 70K, which I very, I think is very, very possible or even more than that, right? I think that is very possible for a Timo Werner card. Think about it in this way. If you bought him for 45K, you might as well just hold on to him, ride it out, ride through the storm, and then boom, on the other side, you're gonna end up selling him for a profit. So it might be one of those things where we do see a dip in the next couple of days over the weekend as people get scared and sell some of these off. But then again, people are going to buy this stuff back after they open their FIFA points, after that whole you know Monday time frame with the pre-order benefits and a lot of people getting onto the full game for the first time. And we have a lot more, again, gameplay demand for people that have not been on the game yet, only on the web app. You're going to have some more demand. I do think a lot of these prices will rebound. So that's why the hold or the sell question is kind of hard to answer for your specific account because it you know kind of matters like what do you value most do you value having the card in your team and being able to play games with it at a high level or do you value your coins more than that and say i would rather sell timo right now for 45 try to buy him back on the weekend for 40 and then ride with him for the next week or two right that's the kind of question you might be asking yourself and it's hard right because this market has so many variables than ever before and it's hard right it's really hard to see this stuff and to time it and to figure it out now the best thing you can be doing right now to make coins is just fluctuation trading right you saw that i have a lot of non-rares a lot of the stuff that i've been trading with has been chemistry style position change and with um just you know some some fluctuations with some of these cards right i bought all of these marcals which i sold them for a vastly crazy array of price. I sold some of them for like 3,000 coins, 2,500. I bought all of these for 700 coins on bid, 700, 800 coins uh, on bid. I bought all these Kiko Forminas for about 650 coins on bid. It's just small flips like this as people are doing SPCs, their prices move up and down. 
that are very, very good. Now, I bought some Spinozolas for 12K, trying to sell them at about 15 to 17. Looks like with the center backs again, he is down a little bit. I have some other non rares that are in here. Again, the number one tip I can give you is when you're trading right now on this game, always be listing your cards. I need to relist mine right now. But when your cards are on the market, you can get lazy sales, right? I picked up this Romero for 7.5K. It had a shadow on it. His cheapest card with a shadow was going for like, you know, seven, I think it was like 9,000 coins. I listed it for a couple hundred coins higher, got a couple extra hundred coins on a lazy sale, as it's called. So always keep your cards listed up on the market because that means they have a chance to sell. So that's my opinion on that. Also, speaking of non rares, this, this is a big, actually, big, big market change. Non rares were maxed at 600 coins for their low their minimum, the, the minimum has been changed now and all non-rares uh, have a low of 300 or 350 coins per card. So that's not impacting a lot of the SBC, you know, like the, some of those cards, like I was trading with Lala, right? I was buying Lala's for about 700 coins and I'm hoping that he goes back up to around 2K where he was earlier today. Uh, it's not affecting these cards really that much. So if you bought some of these cards, like don't be too worried that they're that they're this low at this price at the moment or i got lodi arrows for 600 he's a rare but you know a lot of the cards right now that are non-rares if you're trading with them i wouldn't be super scared because all that it's going to mean is that you're going to potentially make more profit when you get super duper low bids uh before where this kiko Fermina couldn't go below 650 coins now you might be able to snag bids at 300 and then when he goes or 300 to 350 and then he goes to a thousand you're basically making more profit so Unless it was a card that was, you know, at its absolute low of 650 and it was basically minimum price, now it's going to be able to go lower, um, which will, you know, lose some people some coins. There will be people that lose some coins on the market because of this. But uh, for most of the cards that we've been trading with, it's been these non rares that sell for over 1,000 to 2,000 coins. They're going to maintain their demand because, again, people are still doing those advanced SBCs that require these cards so that is kind of the pulse of the market right now i know that it's crazy i know there's a lot of stuff going on and it seems like these cards just won't go up in price whether it's the meta cards or whether it's cards that you maybe have invested in um, in terms of some of these big name players and especially with these price ranges coming through with the upgrades uh the price range upgrade points and their bigger ranges it's kind of like man where are the coins on this market and i don't think the question is where are the coins the question is the supply is so much. Um, when are people going to stop believing in this market and the coins and really start believing, hey, these cards are really not going to go up and start selling? So that's kind of my worry, I guess, at the moment. I'm very curious again to watch out for some of these cards like Oop Meccano. Really curious about this one, man. I really am because I think there's a decent amount of demand still for this card. He was at 18K for a quick second. If he went back down to 18K, I might get interested. But, but playing around with this supply is, yeah, see, he's even dropping a little bit more now as people keep relisting these cards. It's really going to be a telltale sign as we wake up today into Friday, um, you know, what people's motivations are. Do they want to try these cards out or are they going to let them fall back down to where they were? Now, as I'm speaking of Friday, just one really quick note, a couple SBCs. We could have our first player SBC today. People are talking about player of the month. Maybe Antonio, maybe Holland, maybe Mbappe, because all three of those players have been confirmed to be player of the month for their respective leagues. I don't know if we're going to get a player of the month SBC today. I feel like it might be a bit soon. So if you're investing for some of that, just be careful. Um, be careful with that, because I do think it still might be a little bit early with not very many people on the game. We had marquee matchups yesterday, which does give out some decent packs. It's not that expensive to do. So if you haven't given that a shot yet, I'll probably do that here in the next couple of days. Um, but I'm not really expecting a big day of content. We had a couple new objectives yesterday. Uh, so if you want to spend your 10 hour time on the early access or new beginnings, uh, foot friendly, the new beginnings one, you get some untradeable packs, a nice prime electrum players pack for four, four wins, four games, if you can win all four first shot. So, I mean, the content right now isn't flowing like we're used to at the end of FIBA 21. Of course, we had SPCs all the time. Right now, EA is just kind of giving people some, I guess, time to get involved with the game, play the game a little bit. And in reality, again, we have to remember that there is only a small percentage point of the population that is actually on this game right now. And a lot of people haven't even been able to log on 
yet. So again, today's going to be a very interesting day. More preview packs. It's going to move the market around a little bit more. You're going to see more supply, more prices moving and uh, keep trading, right? Keep grinding. I know it, it sometimes is very easy to lose, lose your, your grind and your motivation, but a couple trades later, and you might be going from feeling like you're down and can't make coins to feeling really, really good. 450,000 coins. Literally, I woke up yesterday with 100,000 coins transfer profit. Today alone, we've made 350,000 coins. Again, no FIFA points, no uh, money spent. I, I feel pretty good, right? Those SBC cards and trading with those um, players with chemistry styles and those meta cards and doing the quick flips has granted me a decent amount of coins. So I'm feeling really, really good about that. I know I've got a lot of coins. In a lot of cards right now so it looks like i don't have it that much but we're rolling man it's one of my best starts to fifa in the past couple of years being able to put much more time into it than i ever have before but i will stop rambling hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today hopefully it helped you out a little bit just kind of get a pulse again of where this market is at and how it feels at the moment if you enjoyed it smash a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it's been nate for the count and i'll catch you guys later peace out